Welcome to Grace. My name is Stephen, and this is Church. Second Timothy four six to eight and sixteen to eighteen. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me. But also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack. And save me for His heavenly kingdom. To Him be the glory for ever and ever, Amen. Many years ago, maybe four or five, six years ago, at our food bank, I shared with the sharing place our guests that I had、uh, gained a little bit of weight, and that I wasn't the person who I thought I was, and that、uh, I. Needed people to stop lying to me and telling me, Stephen, you look so good. At the very end of my、uh, speech and whatever I was talking about, a gentleman came forward. His name was Victor, and Victor said, "Hey, Pastor Stephen, if you're really serious about losing weight, I'll meet you here at the sharing place three times a week. We'll go for a run. We'll go slow." But I'll get you up and running, and so I met、uh, Victor three times a week on my lunch break at twelve o'clock, high noon in the middle of summer, so hot.、Uh, but Victor got me up and running. One of our volunteers、uh, is a world-renowned runner, in my opinion. They ran the New York Marathon, the Boston Marathon, the London. Marathon. They run a whole bunch of marathons. Marathons, not that you just pay money and you get accepted into, but marathons you need to qualify for. And so this person heard about myself running, and they came up to me and they said, "Hey, listen, I got all these books at home. I'm gonna bring these books to help you run better." So I'm running with Victor, and I got these books from this other great volunteer, and I'm taking it all in. If you're running any race, and life is a race,、uh, maybe it's not a sprint, more like a marathon. But we're all going towards an end. It's all about how we get there. It's not a race against people. It's a race to be the best version of ourselves. Well, one week I rolled in to the sharing place on a Thursday, and I was not the best version of myself. My hair was probably all messed up. I probably had a beard like a werewolf. And my clothes were not right. And one of the guests from the sharing place, his name was Joe. Joe came up to me, "Hey, Pastor Stephen, what's wrong with you? You don't look the way you're supposed to look. You don't look like you're all together." And I went on to say to Joe, "Hey, you know this is difficult. Life isn't so easy." And Joe went on to say, "But Pastor Stephen, I know you can do it." I believe that you can do it, and for us who come to the sharing place, when we look at you and we see you do it, it makes us believe that we can do the same things. So, with that encouragement, I started again. I started the jog and I started to encourage myself, and then a lady from the sharing place, another guest, came up to me and she had this book. It's called Finding Goby. It was a a book about a person who ran and they ran with their dog and they lost their dog, but nonetheless, it was a great encouragement. People from the sharing place, people from the community, came all together to help myself、uh, be the best version of myself. You know, I often go on about in the old days. In the old days, I had. A childhood mentor, or in the old days, I had this pastor, or in the old days, I had this basketball coach. 
But the fact is I've had people all around me at all times of my life that have helped me and have encouraged me and have helped me become the best Stephen uh, possible. In the letter to Timothy, Paul was saying, Timothy, I know you've had some great help around you. You've had a grandmother, you've had a mom, and you've had me to look after you. There are people to look after you. And just like I'm finishing this race, I believe in you, Timothy, you can finish this race. You know, um, COVID, uh, right before COVID, I um, signed up for the Toronto Marathon. Toronto Marathon does this weird route, but it goes right around the food terminal, right to the very, uh, right the close walking distance to the Sharing Place food bank. So I proudly got up in front of everybody and I said, this is the year. I've signed up. I've given them money. I can do it. And you can be there. Please be there. Encourage me. I, I, I can't wait for that day. Then COVID happened. Now COVID affected everybody in all sorts of different ways. But for Stephen, who uh, was so used to getting out and doing things, he found excuses. Ah, can't go to the gym to play basketball. You know, there's certain things I used to do, I can't do, and I sat and I sat and I sat. And then I had, I had two kids. So guess what? I used that as an excuse. I said, oh, well, I'm looking after my son or I'm looking after my daughter or I'm looking after the house. There's all these different things in my life that I can't get out and go for a run. Well, this week I looked in front of the mirror and I said, man, I want to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, and with all my mind. But I'm not doing a good job in that whole strength department. And so I looked at myself and I was honest with myself. And sometimes we have to look in the mirror and be honest with ourselves. And I said, I'm in this race, this race of life. I'm doing okay there. But I can't honestly say that I'm loving God with all my heart, soul, strength, and mind. When God has given me, you know, a perfectly uh, well-equipped body. And I'm not making use of it. So I... Uh, I went into my closet, found some old shoes, and uh, just the other day, I, I went for a run. And I, I was running down the street of a net, and I saw somebody from the sharing place, and we waved at each other, and then they encouraged me. And then today at the sharing place, or a Thursday at the sharing place, uh, they said, Pastor Stephen, do you jog all the time? said, I'm starting to, I'm really trying, I wanna do better. And they said, ah, well, wear some proper clothes, look like a professional, do it right. And so they encouraged me. I, I mentioned this for, for a couple reasons. I mentioned this because you know what, it's time. Wherever you are, whatever excuses you've had to stop doing the things that you need to do to bring glory to God, you need to stop making excuses. I need to stop making excuses, okay? I can't be a hypocrite. I have made excuses. I need to stop doing those things and choose to do the good things that will help me get to the places I need to go. I also want to encourage you that there are probably, just like just people in my life that are encouraging me and are coming around me, there are people in your life that want to help you and want to encourage you. We are looking to open up the sharing place for breakfast in the mornings. Um, and I hope that if you are in need, that this is a place that you can come and you can find that same encouragement that I have found. Perhaps the place that you want to volunteer at. Then finally, I want to say, you know, whether we like to admit it or not, we are running a race. It's not exactly a sprint. It's not a 100 meter dash and it's not a 400 meter or 800 meter. It's actually even longer than a marathon. But we are running a race. And the question is not if we are going to run the race, but how we are going to run the race. Now, 
it's my goal, I always say week after week after week. God just wants you to do your best, right? Like I don't think you ever believe in an angry God throwing lightning bolts and you know, wants to get back at us, but God just wants to see us doing our best. Now for me, this is my conviction. My conviction is that I am not doing my best in this area of my life and that God has put people around me in order for me to do my best. Well, what is in your life that in theory, you are not doing your best at? I just wanna encourage you, it's a long race. Whatever that goal is or whatever that thing is, it's not too late. You don't need to wait for New Year's Eve to make a resolution. Today can be that day. This is Grace, my name is Stephen, and this is Church. What did Paul mean when he said he had finished the race? I have finished the race is the second clause of three within a passage written by the Apostle Paul to Timothy. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7. The Apostle wrote these words near the end of his life. These three statements reflect Paul's struggles in preaching the gospel of Christ and his victory over those struggles. In the first century, the Romans celebrated both the Olympic Games and the Isthmian Games. Competitors would spend up to 10 months in arduous physical training. Because the Corinthians were very familiar with these events, Paul used the games as an analogy for a believer's life of faithfulness. He wrote the church in Corinth saying, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 25. Paul's exhortation is that believers should be as focused and dedicated as those ancient runners in the games. Our motivation in serving Christ is much higher. We run not for a temporary crown, but for an eternal one. In his letter to Timothy, Paul is not commending himself for having run the full distance. Rather, he is simply describing what the grace of God had enabled him to do. In the book of Acts, Paul says these powerful words, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Acts twenty twenty four. So, by declaring, I have finished the race, Paul is telling Timothy that he had put every effort into the work of proclaiming to all the gospel of salvation. He had completed the course set before him. He had left nothing undone. He was ready to cross the finish line into heaven. In a race, only one runner wins. However, in the Christian race, Everyone who pays the price of vigilant training for the cause of Christ can win. We are not competing against one another, as in athletic games, but against the struggles, physical and spiritual, that stand in the way of our reaching the prize. Every believer runs his own race. Each of us is enabled to be a winner. Paul exhorts us to run in such a way as to get the prize. And to do this, we must set aside anything that might hinder us from living and teaching the gospel of Christ. The writer of Hebrews echoes the words of Paul. Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12, 1-2. May we be diligent in our race. May we keep our eyes on the goal. And may we, like Paul, finish strong. I heard an old, old story 
Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning, and I repented of my sins and won the victory. Thank you. 